All right, we're we're hot, we're live. All right, good evening. Welcome to the October meeting for the Village of Cambridge. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> You. Another month has flown by. Uh, tonight is a special night because we get to swear in our two trustees since we were able to have our elections. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that at this time. We'll start with ladies first. I'll try to stand away from you. Please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support, that I will support the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully, and I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office, of the office of trustee for the Village of Cambridge, of trustee for the Village of Cambridge. Congratulations! I won't shake your hand. Okay. <laughs> we'll skip those. Trustee Robertson. I should say, Dr. Mm -hmm. I, Stephen Robertson. I, Stephen Robertson. We solemnly swear. We solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. Of trustee for the Village of Cambridge. Of trustee for the Village of Cambridge. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. This is also our organizational meeting. Um, our year typically starts uh, after the election, uh, which was supposed to happen in March and, uh, of course, was bumped to September, so we will be doing that tonight. Uh, we are waiving the public comment portion of tonight's meeting. And we will go right ahead to the organizational portion uh, by listing off the appointments. Uh, Deputy Mayor Stephen Robertson, auditors uh, to be picked pending our internal control. Unless we just want to go with right the now, same, with Trustee Walsh and Alec. For our auditors, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to just do that? You guys are so good with that. Yeah. Sure. Might as well do that. So auditors would be Trustee Halleck and Trustee Walsh. Assessor William McCarty, Clerk Deputy Treasurer Lance Allen Wing, Treasurer Deputy Clerk Lester Losoff, Tax Collector Lance Allen Wing, Registrar of Vital Statistics Lance Allen Wing, Deputy Registrar of Vital Statistics Lisa Austin Cudahy, Fire Police Gerald Aiken, Timothy Jansen, and David Webster, Court Clerk Lisa Austin Cudahy, Historian Marianne McAvoy, Librarian Christina Becker, Public Safety Officer Robert Danko, Superintendent of Public Works, Paul M. Tolman, Youth Director, Lindsay Shaner, Zoning Enforcement Officer, William Reagan, Planning Board Chair, Richard Sweeney, Zoning Board of Appeals Chair, John Shower, Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals Clerk, Danny Robinson. And the motion reads to approve appointments list as published. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All those in favor? All right. Any opposed? All right, the next item is the publications. Um, we have to approve an official newspaper that was released on notices uh, for any pertinent government um, notices that have to go out to the public. Uh, so the motion would read to approve the Eagle as the official newspaper for publishing public notices. I'll make a motion. Are there really any other options? We can do the postcard, the postcard. It just it, it tends to cost more than it costs more. And we do send stuff to a couple different papers, don't we? Oh, we send stuff to well, many. We just send it. Yeah. yeah, not official notices, but I mean press releases and stuff like that. Go to yeah. the, the journal press and the Eagle. That's I know the Eastwick Press picks up some of our items. Mm -hmm. I know they reached out to me and said if anything interesting is happening here, send it over to us. But pretty much for the purpose of posting notice for meetings that have to be posted, it's the Eagle. Okay, so we have a motion from Amy. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Second from Steve. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next is to set our board meetings. Our regularly scheduled monthly board meetings will be held on the first Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And we also will be setting the next organizational meeting, which will have a date of April 7th of 2021. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Any against? All right, number eight is our policies. Uh, so we have our current smoking policy, our policy against discrimination and harassment, internet use policy, workplace violence policy, rules of ethical conduct policy, equal employment opportunity, Americans with Disability Act. Um, and the motion reads, the current smoking, discrimination, harassment, internet use, workplace violence, ethical conduct, EEO, and ADA policies remain in effect until superseded. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Could we see copies of those? Just I feel like a refresher would be nice. Yeah, they're, they're also on the website. Okay, great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Welcome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, section 9 um, will to meet the Section 14 disclosure and waiver um, when board members have family members that work for the village and other capacities, um, we have to disclose that. And so the first one uh, would be for myself, since my husband's on the fire department. So that will read approver waiver of Section 14 of the Village of Cambridge ethics policy for the following Section 14 disclosures for both of them. So you abstain from the vote? Yeah, I'm abstaining. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make the motion. I'll second. Oh, go ahead. Well, it's all yours, Alex. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then the second would be for Trustee Robertson. Um, his wife, Danny Robertson, works for the planning board. So that would also read approve the waiver of section 14 of the Village of Cambridge ethics policy for the following section 14 disclosures. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item number 10 is the advance approvals of claims. Um, so it reads, the Board of Trustees authorizes payment in advance of audit of claims for public utility services, postage, freight, and express charges. All such claims must be presented at the next regular meeting for audit. The claimant and the officer incurring or approving the claims are jointly and severely liable for any amount the Board of Trustees disallows. This is basically giving uh, less the authority to be able to pay um, all those bills when they are received here, as opposed to waiting till our next monthly board meeting. Uh, most of these postage, obviously, you have to pay at the time you purchase, as such with freight and express. Uh, but the utilities are the biggest one. If we don't pay those utilities by certain dates, we incur surcharges and late fees on those. Um, so we get typically have always allowed those to be prepaid. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number 11 is our mileage reimbursement, uh, which states the Board of Trustees will approve reimbursement to village officers and employees who use their personal automobiles while performing their official duties, um, village duties, at a rate of 57 cents per mile, which is in keeping with it's the a, We do basically a penny less than the federal. federal. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number 12 is in regards to uh, schools and conferences. Um, the clerk and treasurer are authorized to attend the NICOM fall training school. The ZEO planning board and zoning board of appeals members are authorized to attend the Saratoga County planning and zoning conference. 
which I expect will be all soon this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying we won't be paying money? We're, yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're a cheap date this year. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number 13 is for our official depository. Um, and it reads, Glens Falls National Bank is the official depository for all monies received by the village treasurer, clerk, and receiver of taxes for the village of Cambridge. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 14 is our fee schedule uh, to approve the 2020-2021 village fee schedule, uh, no change from last year. I'll make a motion. One second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? All right. Sold and that concludes the organizational portion of our meeting. We will move along to our standard meeting portion, which starts with the approval of our meeting minutes from September 2nd, which I trust you've set any items that you may notice back. The motion would read to approve the 9 second 2020 board meeting minutes as written. I'm abstaining from it. I just want to set that take my structure. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Should we wait to vote? Well, he'll stay. Yes, he'll stay. Yeah. I'll wait a second for him to sneak back in. The next is to approve the September 30th, 2020 special board meeting minutes as written. So um, that was our annual update document meeting that we had from a few weeks ago to go over that. Um, it's in there. It's pretty straightforward. We only need two motions. Accepting need to adjourn. I'll make the motion to approve those minutes. Good. I'll second. Amy, second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving along to number item 16, which is our treasurer's report. That is in there. all of the bills. Um, Lance or Les did not point out any special item. I usually have him note if there's any weird different ones on here that we might have questions about. What is the total you have for, for those plants? Uh, I'm showing for unpaid $19,874.54. And paid, I've got uh, $3,412.87. All right. What's on the paid vouchers? There's a section that's X off. Yeah, the T. The, uh, TFA account that shouldn't shouldn't be on there. It's just a report oh, discrepancy. Yeah. yeah, trust and agency funds. So you have it's three thousand. What is it? Three thousand. Three thousand four hundred twelve dollars and eighty seven cents. Okay. So it included all the insurances and stuff from the TNA. Correct. That should have been on this one. Correct. Gotcha.
I notice the sand is already on here. Our winter sand, no. <laughs> Not ready for that yet. Nope. All right, if there's no other questions, the motion would read approve the September 2020 statement of unpaid vouchers totaling $19,874.54 and the paid vouchers totaling $3,000. $412.88 pending the audit of the individual vouchers. I'll make the motion. Sorry. I'll put it. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Any opposed? Right, and you'll see in there, Les has all the rest of the operating statements, which now should read with the corrected numbers with all of last year being backed out of the system and the system uh, running on just this year's only. The outcome of the firehouse was that it did in fact pass um, so that that was exciting it was exciting to finally have our election uh, considering we had that six month delay uh, so of course does the firehouse pass that means there's more work for us to do moving forward um, and tonight you'll have the contract in front of you from CT now um, that is their standard agreement for Moving on from this point um, that there are architectural firm um, that we will be working with and there's a several page document that shows what they all will be doing. Um, so tonight I'm basically looking for approval to contract with them um, pending attorney review. Um, I obviously want Carter to look through and just make sure um, everything is to, you know, the wording, etc., is all according to what works for us as a village um, and go over that. Um, so if you'll see on the very top page, the, the price to do this is $386,683. Um, and that will carry us right through to the end of the project with them. Um, which is based on a percentage of, of the 3.7. 3.7 is roughly architectural fees is 11 percent. Car, is the wording for that okay, or do we need to put um, pending attorney review in there? We need to have pending because, attorney. Yeah, Lance has got it done up. Yeah. Okay, yes. so it, you should add yeah, that to the end. It needs to be specified. Yeah. 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 Yes. Pending attorney review. $400,000? Yeah. Yeah, with like specifications. Pending <laughs> attorney review and second. <laughs> okay, I have made that adjustment. So could you read that back to us? Okay. Authorized Mayor to sign document G802-2017, amendment to agreement with CT Mail for design and construction of new firehouse pending attorney review. What is the thing? I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second. Any discussion? I know I gave you the short and condensed version, but the whole thing's in there. You can look through. If you have any questions, please feel free. Send Steve or I, uh, um, you know, an email saying, "Hey, what does this mean? What is this part, etc." Uh, if there's items in there, so there's a lot to, to do, but it will take us through for the next nine, ten months, I believe. It's going to be. Absolutely. 
absolutely. Um, and this is the first step, and now um, we can meet the Firehouse Committee and CC Mail again and actually finalize the drawings. Because right now what we have and what we've been seeing at the meetings, that's just the conceptual drawing. That's not the true final version that would then be converted into blueprints um, and then sent out to bid. So still a lot of work to be done. Um, next leads us to the, the um, I'm sorry, oh, we didn't do the motion, yeah. <laughs> we had a motion in a second, but we didn't vote. Oh, yeah, we vote. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> that would be bad, that would be bad. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Um, next up is the Archeo from Harkin. This is the same thing that we looked at. Um, Back in September, they had submitted it to us. Um, the cost to do the final steps, which is the retrieval of those items, um, that's thirty-nine thousand eight hundred and ninety-two. Um, last last September, when we got the information, or I'm not September, they initially gave it to us last fall when we started all this. They've updated it. Um, we decided to hold off because we wanted to see how the vote would be. There was no point of paying for Archeo if we weren't in fact going to be building a facility there. So now that it has happened, um, here is the permission to go forward. They have in there the sign-offs uh, from the Parks and Historic uh, Preservation. Um, that the whole thing had to be approved by all those entities to be able to, to do that. And they also, not more light reading for your pleasure, they lay out pretty much everything that has to be done with little maps of where everything is and uh, all, all that stuff. So we like to be able to get this done so that way they can begin. The goal is for them to begin the archaeo work as soon as possible to get that knocked out prior to winter. Um, so that way there will be no holdups next spring to construction if that's already done. And I know we talked about this when we went through the seeker, but what happens with the material they remove? Those, so they remove and log and categorize all the materials and then they work with historic preservation to get them turned back over to the tribe okay. that they belong to. Uh, most of that will be filtered right through historic recs. They'll, they'll document everything with Harkin to make sure all those items actually get turned over properly. I would like them to take some pictures to leave for us. Can you at least keep the pictures of the items to see? What thirty nine thousand dollars accounted for? <laughs> um, it's a lot of stones, hard stones. Yeah, um, some minor. I think it's it's a Lance. Lance can give you off a copy of the report of what they of, of some of the items, pottery, etc. Oh no, I'll read it to you word for word. Yeah. <laughs> can I get your phone number? But, but they do they do predate you know the, the pre-contact period so therefore they they got we've got to do it some um, they can't be there and just dozed over like the good old days of demoing properties we have a process now so so they've already done this study or they have to do the study no no the study's already been done so they okay. came out and dug so around they're asking for us this is the next step this is for them to actually remove the items okay. that are present okay. from the look dig them all out left so the last two summers ago, we had to do the phase two, mm -hmm. and they came out and did more holes, which revealed these sections. They then covered these sections up okay. to leave until we decide what to do. Because in the dirt, if you leave them covered, it's fine, but you can't build on them. They have to stay open, even in the dirt. So in the meantime, did the farmer plant on top of it or around? I believe you had done around them, but it didn't yeah. matter because they buried them back in. Because that. that had already always been farmed and it's never disturbed them. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is for them to actually do the process of retrieving the items and getting them turned, log, catalog turned over, or working with DEC and um, the historic preservation to do that. And we will update the motion to put pending attorney review. Yes. Thank you. 
on, uh, on page three of the contract, there's a section 4.2 Native American consultation. Mm -hmm. It says Harkin strongly recommends that the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohican Indians, the tribal entity with a demonstrated interest in sites in Eastern New York State, be contacted regarding the Cambridge. Do we, who, who's in charge of contacting them if they have been contacted? Uh, it would probably either be Harkin, the RDO firm themselves, yep. or Shippo, okay. the state as well. Gotcha. But it, it's pretty much them all working together to make sure that the, the tribe has been contacted and is aware the artifacts will be coming to them, et cetera. Gotcha. Public education. Oh, boy. I mean, they'll have public education talks in Washington and Ridgeway County, the library. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. It's interesting to yeah. see what they, you know, what comes out of there. I know there's a lot of people who've already mentioned, like, parking along the roadway and watching them. Yeah. I was like, oh, please just make sure you're off the road. <laughs> I don't know if it's just set up a viewing tent, I don't know, but uh, yeah. So yeah, the motion reads, authorize mayor to sign agreement with Harkin Archaeological Associates for phase three archaeological data retrieval plan in the amount of $39,892 pending. Yeah. 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 I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. And uh, this forty thousand dollars is being paid for out of the three point seven million dollars. Right? Yes, this was included as part of the project. All right. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the corn was chopped off last week, so that's that. which wasn't a big deal to me because I told the farmer in the spring, from building the firehouse, your corn could be destroyed. So <laughs> just forewarning, yeah, but and COVID happened and he lucked out. So <laughs> um, also, as we mentioned before, our AUD was completed and submitted to the state. Uh, so once we get the confirmation back from the state that they've accepted our annual update document, then copies of the AUD will be available to the public. Uh, to pick up here to go over pretty much lays out the whole financials for our last full fiscal year. And um, uh, the EPA planning sessions happened finally. I know a number of trustees, we all enjoyed those thoroughly. Alex, thank you so much for all your hard work on that mm -hmm. and the steering committee. Yeah, to be there to everybody who showed up. With. It was it was fabulous. It was fabulous. The, the turnout online was a large number of residents, and it was just great to sit there and listen to the ideas and questions that people had. And I hope you know the different groups keep this moving forward on the different yeah. possibilities and ideas. Um, it also did have me thinking about um, you know we, we ended the year in good shape with with a fund balance. Um, for us to possibly thinking about um, maybe taking some of that and actually hiring a grant, grant writer for the village. Um, I know the village of Greenwich has one that they pay for under a yearly contract, I think it's about 5,000 for the year. And that person seeks and finds all the grants that their municipality is eligible for and then presents them to the board and says, what ones do you want us to do? And they submit them. Yeah. Um, I'm not looking for approval tonight, but if it's something I like to think about, I think that would be in our best interest to have a person on staff that that's exclusively what they do for us. Um, I think that would be very beneficial. Um, I love that idea. I think if we're ever going to do it, then doing it right now when we have the federal partners who are pointing mm -hmm. us at things that absolutely may be eligible for, then mm -hmm. being able to fully capitalize on it seems really smart. So this month I'll work on getting some, putting out the RFP for it and getting some interested candidates um, and any trustees that are interested in do the interviews with them and try to pick one that seems to fit best for us. Um, I was going to reach out to Greenwich to see who they use to get some idea. Um, I, I also, the supervisor for White Creek, Jimmy Griffith, um, they're heading into their budget time. And when I mentioned that to him, he had mentioned about the, uh, the idea of possibly having a, a split shared service grant writer for the town of White Creek and the village of Cambridge. So we'll see after they do their budget cycle how that pans out. But that would be, you know, that would be something to think about too is, is 
splitting the cost of having a grant writer considering the village sits in the you know the town of uh, White Creek. Um, it'd be beneficial to both municipalities to look into doing that. So, yes, um, and that's pretty much all I have pending any of your questions from the board for me. Okay. If you think of anything along the way, just please feel free to, to ask. We'll go ahead to reports. Uh, Fire Department Chief Gray, um, he submitted a letter. He says, first, I'd like to thank everyone that came out for vote and to show support for the fire department. Um, second, the new gear washer is in and hooked up. Thank you, Maddie and Gerald, for doing that. Uh, so our fire department actually has a full-fledged actual fire gear washer. <laughs> First time, it's not a normal household cleaning washer, it's an actual fire gear washer. Um, so thank you to the board for seeing that need. Um, he says third CFD will be starting their fire prevention week, uh, which they've been posting many different items on their page. It's a, it's a little trickier fire prevention this week. They typically go to the school and do a whole thing that's kind of out this year for that. Uh, he says, thank you to the Village PD and DPW for assistance um, at the Main Street Fire. So back at the beginning of September, um, the actually the, the house right across from the fire department had caught in fire um, and was severely damaged in that. And uh, that took a lot of coordination from, from everybody to, to keep everybody safe during that. Um, and then his last comment, he says, my firefighters with all their hard work at the fire last month. So he's thanking all the firefighters for continuously coming out and, and being there uh, when we need them the most. So that is all for Tom's report. And DPW Maddie, it's good to have you here this month. Yes, well, I don't have much, but my part-timers, Hal Spezio and Gerald Lake, and they were, they were busy. <laughs> They, uh, of course, they mowed, and uh, uh, they've done the, uh, the weekly trash. Uh, uh, they fixed uh, uh, the sander. We're getting that ready. Uh, they put the tire on it. it. It went flat over the summer. I don't know why, but it's holding there now. Um, we installed, of course, the, uh, the new uh, washer for the firehouse. Um, we had a bunch of scrap metal out around our pole barn that we picked up, and we sent it down to the recycling place in North Hoosick. And I brought the check back to Lance, so he got the money for that. Um, and the gazebo, um, I don't think I should be putting any more money in that the gazebo out there because the kids are they're kicking the spindles out, you know, they're they're ruining the steps, and we're fixing it all the time. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm. Uh, we actually. And then you got volunteers that go down there and spend their money, and they kick them out, they bust all the stuff, they paint it. So yeah. I don't know what we should do about that. The Lions Club actually a few weeks ago had been discussing this very thing about ways that they contrib can contribute funding toward keeping that gazebo um, in, in the condition it needs to be. So I'll reach back out to them again. Because I have all, we have all the lumber for the four of that. They bought that right. probably three years ago. It was like $2,300. Yeah. And we just, you know, there's no sense of putting it down if they're going to just smash it and crash it. I know. I, I don't. I it's, don't understand. You know, it's it's a historic item, and, and I know it's and I know it's young have. kids, and you can't do anything about the young kids because they're just going to keep doing it. Well, there's no system of holding them accountable. No, mm -hmm. they can't be arrested. No, they can't be they arrested. Can't be their parents them, don't care what time they're out on the street. Yeah. Parked by the police department. Move the gazebo again right by the police. Yeah, that was quite an undertaking when that happened there. Was it 2012 or 2013? I think they moved it from the school to the library. Oh, wow. And okay. then, of course, well, we serviced the leaf machine. We got that all back in service, and we went to put the leaf box on our other dump truck, and we backed it out of the shop and uh, let the motor let loose. So. And I got a estimate quote from Tulare's down in North Hoosick. It's going to be about $8,593.34 for just the labor and the engine parts. And they just put in 
the turbo and the injectors, which aren't bad right now, but they're not sure until they get into the the process of doing it. So they just put that in there and for the either injectors or the turbo, that's gonna be five thousand eight hundred and five dollars. So the whole the whole cost will be fourteen thousand three ninety eight if we need all that. Which I think five almost six thousand of that we might not need. Okay. So it'll be about eighty five hundred dollars for them to do the motor job and have it back here in eight days. I checked with Les this morning. We have the thirteen thousand in the budget in the equipment section. So that'll get me we'll with get the eighty five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that need does that need board approval for him to get the repairs done? It's in the budget. It's in the budget. Okay. Yeah. All right. I that's just want to bring it to you guys. That's that's a lot of money. Uh, it is, but you know, this truck is we're going on our fifth year of having it. And plus it's a two thousand two. So. We're making our last our last payment will be this coming year on it. Yeah. Um time for, for yep, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll definitely look into possibilities for next budget season if we need to address having another truck. And then the one item, the one item for uh, discussion. executive and session. Um, and I also would like to see if I could put the old sweeper on Auctions International and see if we can get some money for that and just get rid of it. Do you talk, talk to Greenwich too? I know they mentioned. I already did. They already come over. They said it's too ancient. They can't use anything off. They don't want to part of Okay. Because no. I know they called me yeah. back a while and I said, look, it's COVID. That's I can't kind of talk about old sweepers right now. Come back to me in a couple well, months. If, if we're yeah. going to auction it, we do have to declare it surplus. Yeah. 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 I'd like to surplus that. And then we have a fire pump that come on the old fire truck that we have that we made into a dump truck. I'd like to surplus that and either give it the us or the fire department, the money or whatever. Cause it's out in my pole barn. It's been out there for probably six years. Did you talk with the fire department? Do they have an interest in keeping the pump? For no, it's just, it's, okay. no. There's a guy in Salem that wants it for one of his old trucks just to put it on for the show. But I said, you're going to have to go on auctions international if I go on there and, and, and right, bid yeah, on, and, bid on. and whoever gets it gets it absolutely they did really good with the fire truck last i know greenwich those guys they put a lot of their fire holes and stuff on and they get quite a bit of money for that stuff so yeah. they gave us the idea to put it on there to make you know get some money for it yeah the old fire we'll get more, yeah we'll get more money on it and, yeah not it's not other fire companies buying them because no. obviously they can't use them but like just random people themselves collect them for yeah. different things it's kind of interesting all right so we want to surplus some items out do you have a motion drafted for us declare old sweeper what is the, the old, old elgin i do believe it's an 83 1983 elgin 1983 elgin. street sweeper all right, so we'll call it the old 1983 Elgin Street Sweeper, and what's the other one? It's a Darley, I do believe, 750 minute pump. Darley 750 minute pump. All right, so the motion is declare old, well, take the old out, 83. <laughs> 1983 really sounds rather young. Oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> to declare 1983 Elgin Street Sweeper and Darley 750 minute pump, and I put it in quotes, so if I get better nomenclature, I'll put it in there. Surplus and put up for auction. Doesn't need attorney reviews, so which should be all right. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Okay, so a yes. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and we do have one other motion, but I put it yes. in for DPW. Yes. Very nice. Would you like me to read it? Yes, sir. Okay. Please do. Approved participation in state snow and ice control program winter season 2020-21 per standard annual contract with Superintendent of Public Works of Washington County. This is what we do every year with them, basically. They'll reimburse us for plowing the roads down here, even if they're state. Any roots. I'll make the motion. Okay, Amy Walsh. I'll second. Okay, Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Sorry, Maddie, we'll address that one yep. other item in the yep. second no session. Uh, police, Sergeant Danko couldn't be with us tonight, but he does have his report. Um, he also so like, submitted 14 reportable cases to the Department of Criminal Justice, which brings our yearly total up to 132. A total of 12 people were arrested in the month of September, which is total arrest for the year is 76. They handled 36 calls for service, which is 430 calls. There was two motor vehicle accidents investigated in September uh, for a total of 14 accidents for the year. 25 traffic tickets were issued for a total tickets of 216. Um, and then he put in here arrest types, trespass, BNT, mental health, and domestic violence. Um, and then his notes attached are posts for the radar signs as requested. So a few months ago, we had talked about having those speed signs and put up for the village. He has those in there for four signs, plus their solar panel and battery and the data storage, et cetera, for those is about 10,000 to do for. So look, review the proposals and look it over. And if we have any questions, we can talk to Danko. There's nothing we have to make a decision on tonight. Greenwich has two over there. Um, so we can go forward with that. And then finally, DOT got us our study of the West Main Street and Union intersections. So that report um, should be in there as well. Could we put this on the website separately to make it easier for people to find? Which which report? The, the traffic report. The, the study? Yeah. The DOT? This one? Yeah. Wait, I think I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, yeah, it's this one. Sure. It's on, on the other side. It's of the back of the page. Right the back here. of your page, you're holding in your hand. That, that, that one, one more. That one. That one. Oh. Wait, this is it? That, that is it. Oh. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> that, which I'll read off since it's so short, because I know many people were interested in this study. Um, it says, it's from DOT, it says, we initiated a study in response to your phone conversation with one of our engineers on March 6, 2019, requesting a safety review and traffic signal warrant study on the subject intersection. I apologize for the delayed response. We analyzed the latest five years of reported crash history, completed a sign inventory along Route 372, field measured sites distance, collected vehicle volumes, and observe traffic flow through the intersection during AM and PM peak periods. The crash history did not reveal a discernible pattern that would be remedied by a traffic signal. Adding a traffic signal would likely increase collisions rear end, creating a problem that did not previously exist. The sight distance at the intersection is sufficient and volumes for the side streets have decreased from our previous signal warrant studies of 2009. We are, however, recommending additional pedestrian warning signs to be installed at North and South Union and Washington Street crosswalks along the Route 372 corridor. Our Washington County residency will have the signs installed as their schedule allows. So that is the synopsis of their report. So we can definitely put that on the- uh, yeah, The signs are up. The signs are already up. They came and already put them up? Yep. Yep. When did they do that? Uh, about two weeks ago well, on, on a Monday. Know. First, I haven't yep. driven to the West. There's thing. one down by Scott Smith on the telephone pole. Okay. They changed the ones by the crosswalks. Okay. And then, where was the. Uh, Anything by Washington? In Washington Street. Yes, in Washington Street, Scott, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Will you put a note for Jim to put that on our website? I do. Thank you. Um, we also do have, um, since we are moving the firehouse from Main Street out to Gilbert, um, I did have Sergeant Danko reach out to DOT again to seek a speed reduction along that stretch in 313. Um, so their first step since we made the request would be obviously they'll do a speed study and go from there. Um, but it's the only stretch in the village that is not 35 or 30 miles an hour or less. And so, you know, 
even if they come back to us and say, well, no, I'm, we're, we're going to probably push back on that one simply saying no. It's our only village section. Yeah, that's like is, a daycare is, there. Yes, and the firehouse now, et cetera, we would like that to be consistent with the rest of the village. So that we will probably have addressed by next year when we have to open the firehouse. We might have an answer from DOT by then to reduce the speed. <laughs> Well, we need a traffic signal for them to be able to come out into the road, or who decides that? Um, I don't believe so. I mean, I, I believe the fire department will definitely keep us apprised of what it's like. I, I think they feel that the speed is the same as it would be on Main Street. Yeah. It's going to be even safer than coming out on Main Street on that stretch, as long as the speed limit can be reduced down to I'm sure that will be part 45. of the speed study if state's doing that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I believe the fire departments in our area do have those that are requested by the fire departments themselves. Okay. I don't like to see municipalities that do that. I can, I can look into that. I know some guys are in other departments, so I can ask them. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. I know Melissa had mentioned concerns question. about safety, too, about pedestrians. Um, so. Well, Which there's not good. a lot of pedestrians because we don't have sidewalk on that right. stretch. Um, but. In, in the event that we do get sidewalk on that stretch, then it's definitely going to be more uh, more traffic. Uh, but yes, that would be great to get that consistent with the rest of the village. Um, and that, that was pretty much all for his report. We do have the one item. Um, donation. It's a donation from uh, the Easton Monthly Meeting of Friends. Yeah, it's the Quaker Church over in Easton. Yeah, so they had sent in a $100 donation to the police department. If anyone were to make said motion. I'll make a motion. All right. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> so um, just back to the traffic stuff, and just yes. this discussion has me something I was thinking about, and it's sort of selfish <laughs> only because I'm now teaching a 16-year-old how to drive. But <laughs> so um, I, as you guys know, I live on Broad Street. So when you get to um, where Main and Broad Street meet, right where the um, the old folks' home is. Um, there's a part of the sidewalk on on Main Street that juts out, and then it cuts back in by the Rice Mansion. When you come up to that intersection and you want to take a right-hand turn onto Main Street off of Broad, and there are three cars parked right there on that sidewalk, it's incredibly hard, one, to see cars coming from the right. And if you are taking a right, you have to make a wide right turn to get around some of the cars. So. Um, that I meant to bring it up like a couple of months ago, but yeah. it was brought up years ago. Oh, is there any way I remember this no being discussed? Here? And the people who have businesses there, what's the best way to put it? I'll tell Dave to start ticketing. I'm kind of a bit upset about the thought that the thought that we might make it no parking, even though it only takes away like two or three parking spots. Yeah, it wouldn't be that. That is just, it's um, but that's something we have to go through the state since it's a state highway. I, I have a quick answer for that because we went through. I went through this last year with with another thing. So the curb, if you notice on that, you have the yep. curb. Yep. There is no white line. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're which right. means, You're according right. to the states, so when I talked to Hadinka, reach out to state last year when it was brought up as an issue, or actually 2018. Because there's no white line, that means people are not supposed to park there. It is automatically a no parking zone, and the police can be ticketing those that park there. So I can just re retell the PD, please start patrolling that again and ticket those that are parked yeah. there. You should probably give them a heads up first. Well, I believe, a, but um, Sergeant Danko did go into the businesses back when the cars were parked there in 2018 and say, you need to move your vehicles from here and out, you're going to be ticketed, and it started up again. So. At this point, we're just so it already. We don't even have to do no parking, according to the state. We don't have to put a sign up. We do not because it already denotes that there is no room to safely park there. When there when there's no white line, that means you cannot park there, according to state you're driving regs. Basically, parking on the street. You are right. You are yeah, in the street. And that's and why there's on. no white line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's impossible. And that's why there's no white line is because you are actually physically in the road at that yeah. time and there should be no parking there. That's I, why they made us put that curve in the sidewalk. They're right. supposed to park from there down. Down. You have to park down. 
Um, and there's well, plenty of room here. Yeah. 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 So I can send the police over again to just remind the, along that stretch that there is no parking and that we're going to be serious about it. And those that will be parking there will be taken. It is for safety because you mm -hmm. you can't you can't see when you yeah. come out. Um, so narrow spots are hard for bikers too. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. So well, thank you for bringing that up. You know, pedestrian driver safety is definitely yeah. what we want in courage. For sure. Um, youth, you'll see Lindsay's report in there. Um, after school has been going. Um, pretty much keeping the standards for COVID, washing and distancing and masking and et cetera. Um, there will be, I believe, um, for the 30th and 31st of this month, the Lions Club is going to be doing a haunted house in the upstairs, a one way in and out haunted house COVID compliance uh, for kids. Uh, so the Lions Club should be putting out details. I believe it's, it's only going to be from 5 to 7 Friday night and then 5 to 7 on Halloween, um, only till 7 to observe the uh, curfew because children aren't supposed to be out unattended after 7 p.m. Uh, but the youth center is a great location because you have two separate staircases that go up the front, one-way traffic in, in, pass through the little haunted maze, and then right back out the other door and the other, and the other thing. So something fun for the kids to look forward to, uh, despite the hardships of this year. Um, and totally put on by the Cambridge Lions Club as a way of providing service for the community. So there'll be info coming out about that. Um, and that's pretty much the highlights from, from that report. See you. Um, assessor, Bill, you were up, sir. Just got that item for executive session. All right, pretty straightforward. We'll do that. Zoning enforcement officer uh, report is in there. Uh, pretty, pretty much just basic, basic zoning. And zoning board, planning board, looks like they, they did have a meeting last month. We can review that. I should probably know the answer to this, but what is the planning board discuss? Is the planning board discuss? Yeah, like what comes before the planning board? So it would be it would be any items um, in our zoning. So okay, the zoning. typically there's a criteria in if you pulled up the zoning. Um, you have a whole list of things that we need to go in front of the planning board. Site, anything that requires site plan review. Okay. Um, anything that requires a special use permit that has to go in front of them. Um, any setback adjustment type deal is going on that would have to go to them too. Um, Generally, the ZEO handles what right, well, I consider basic. administrative zoning yeah. stuff. He's the first stop. Yeah, he's the first stop when an application comes in. It would be in front of him. Um, subdivisions. I'm sorry. Subdivisions. Yep. Subdivisions. Yep. Subdivision. You want to subdivide your property? That's got to go in front of the planning board. Um, yeah. There's I mean, a whole rundown in our in our zoning thing of what gets kicked over cool. to them. That's not a not that's not just a basic zoning thing that uh, Bill could handle. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so right in this one, they just uh, application for a minor, minor subdivision. subdivision. Yep. Gotcha. Um, Carl, you were up. We don't have any report except for um, on the litigation matter. All right, thank you so much. You'll find the historian report in the And she's back working in the office. She's still, <laughs> she doesn't have public. Coming in, but she's been working a lot of requests by email and phone. Just to go back to Carter real quick, I'm sure you pay close attention to what's going on with the governor and all of his executive orders. So, a few days ago, he just released this thing saying he was going to fine municipalities ten thousand dollars a day. But that for like COVID hotspot, did, did you you know what I'm talking about? So. I, I guess that, that's mostly geared towards big places like New York, New York City, right? Yeah, he's definitely targeting the areas that are approaching, you know, the higher percentages. I, he's got a listing of all the zip codes. I don't think there's anywhere north of 
Orange County, that's on the list. Yeah, yeah, Washington County is doing great, apparently, yeah. with, with their COVID numbers. So, yeah, I was just, I mean, we're, we keep change. a lookout on it, yeah. but you know, as of right now, no, no, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, and it's probably these municipalities not enforcing some of, some of the requirements that businesses and stuff are supposed to be adhering to. I imagine that's why um, he would seek to say, well, we're going to you know, hold you accountable if you don't right. you know, make them right. comply. Right. Yeah. So, thankfully, we're a little bit removed from that <laughs> end of the yeah. state. <laughs> Oh, but are we, I mean, we still need to do what we need to do to comply and keep, you know, distancing and wearing the masks and sure. and staying, you know, away from each other as best as possible. I know it's so hard because we're 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 made to want to gather and be together and to have this type of time where that's dangerous and you're not supposed to. It's difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. So we have librarian Christina put some info in there. Um, they have their limited browsing hours um, and their occupation limits that are set for libraries. So they're uh, they're they're holding up through all of this as well. And clerk, you are up, sir. All right. A few items I've got for you. Uh, got the justice report in there. We have a 30-day uh, advance notice that uh, Village Pizza and Pasta, East West Main Street, they they put in for a license to sell beer and cider. If you've seen them there before, they're, they're not looking to have a bar. He's basically looking for folks to be able to buy it for takeout, folks taking out pizza and stuff like that. He said he's not looking to run a, uh, in in-store drinking establishment. He's just looking to sell for, uh, for takeout. Anyway, there's a copy of it in here. Uh, it's just a 30 day advance notice in case we wanted to get involved. Um, so, so I'm sorry, what is that all about? It's just, they, they have what to, that means to suggest it's just an advance notice. It's just, right, it's just that notice. heads up. They, gotcha. It's just a requirement. Right, it's just, the state requires them to give us a notice in case we did have any issues with them becoming an uh, alcohol serving establishment. Gotcha. We then, Say, hey, we have these yep. objections that we can bring before the liquor authority. Fair they did the same thing before the Bob reopened. Yeah, right. The yeah. licenses didn't yeah. transfer there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll see what else I've got here is taxes. And this is updated as of today. I believe uh, have it here somewhere. We've now collected 892,935, which puts us at 92.4% uh, collected, which that, that that's about as that's about as good as we did with this. Yeah. You can see if you follow the follow, especially look towards the end of September. Uh, I sent out reminders to everyone who hadn't paid, and uh, quite a bit has come in. So, is there a particular date where we're like after the thirty first of October? I cannot collect. It gets transferred up to county, and that's relevied on their county and uh, town taxes. Thank you. Just questions before I ask. Oh, well, I'm doing all right. The mind yeah, reader sometimes. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I know better than being mind reader. And lastly, <laughs> registrar uh, 27 certificates in clear. So, uh, with pending your questions, that completes my report. Now. Right, thank you. Thank you. Any anything else before we get into executive session? We we feel pretty confident that say that we stop at this 95 and a half percent. That's it. We feel pretty confident the county will cover th this year. Everything's looking good on the county side. Oh, yeah, they're legally obligated to. Plus, county has, I forget what their fund balance is. They have a couple million dollars. I mean, That's more than a couple million, million dollars. Yeah, it's a year. fund balance. Yeah, so okay. I, I had seen actually the, the county treasurer at an event a few weeks back. And he was bantering, and he's he's like, "How's it going? You're hopefully you're not going to have too many to send my way." And I was like, "No, it's going good. We shouldn't have any." Yeah. I'm like, "You're still going to pay him if I send him over?" And he's like, "Yeah." So, <laughs> so there's no there's no red flags or alarm on their end that they're not going That's to good. be able to. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. So, to that in right. session with motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Yes. Uh, All those in right. favor? Aye. Right. Right. Any opposed? Okay, I'll go ahead and you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
we supposed to record that one? Um, not coming out of executive no. session. Okay, now we're back to the regular meeting. All right. All right, we're back to the regular meeting, and there is no further business. So, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, good evening. Thank you, everyone.